It's been just over a year since the Templin Institute began its operations across YouTube, and with your support, we've achieved far more than we ever expected. Since we first launched our Patreon back in February 2018, every single one of our initial pledge goals has been met, bringing you more episodes per month and new shows like Atlas and Dossier. But now it's time once again to decide the future of the Institute, because starting on October 16th, we'll be holding our third and final pilot week. We'll be releasing another four pilots day by day before letting our patrons vote on which one will be added to our regular series. As before, we have some returning favorites that didn't quite make the cut, alongside some brand new ideas. We begin with Audio Log, a returning pilot where the Templin Institute describes alternate worlds lacking the footage or visuals for traditional investigation. Next is Rivalries, a brand new pilot where we profile the relationship and conflicts between two or more factions, their respective strengths and weaknesses. After that, another returning favorite, Bestiary. Here, the Templin Institute profiles the most legendary monsters, entities, and creatures from across alternate worlds. Finally, we end the week with High Command, a new series where we analyze and break down conflicts, battles and wars, the participating factions, their objectives and strategies. As mentioned, this is the last scheduled pilot week, so if you would like to help decide which new show will be added to our rotating schedule, a pledge of just $1 a month to our Patreon page gets you a vote. You'll find the link in the description. But what happens to the shows that don't get picked up? Well, the Institute has been known to act in mysterious ways, and it remains quite possible that shows not selected for regular release will make the occasional appearance. And who knows? As the Institute continues to expand across this dimension and others, another pilot week, or something like it, could be a possibility. After all, some investigations are too critical to ignore. But Pilot Week 3 is only the first in a line of projects we're currently working on. Most are too early in development to be properly revealed, so be sure to check our Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram over the coming months for some hints, clues, and interesting glitches. One thing we can talk about, however, is the Templin Institute's very first convention appearance at DragonCon 2018. So stick around as we switch formats for something never before attempted, an unscripted conversation between Mark and myself. Hello and welcome to what is a first in the history of the Templin Institute, an unscripted discussion between Larissa and myself about our recent trip to DragonCon 2018. Larissa, how's it going? It's going excellent. I'm uh, super excited to relive my memories of Atlanta. Reliving it for the second or third time at this point, because we have talked about it on our other channel, The Neutral Zone, but I feel it's best to get like a Templin-specific outlook on what exactly happened. Yeah, some... Super exclusive, you might say, insights. Exclusive. All right, so the first question I have is, um, before we ended up going there, did you have any idea what DragonCon was? Like, had you heard of it before? I, n I had only heard about it as it related to a film festival. A friend of mine got their film accepted into their film festival. I didn't know it was a whole nerd convention. So uh, I was in for a bit of a surprise when we decided to go. Well, yeah, that's what blew my mind, because I, I feel like I must have heard about it at some point, either just like in articles or something or like a cosplay article, maybe. But uh, like actually arriving there, this must be like the biggest convention that I've never heard of. Maybe everyone else knows about it, but it was completely new to me because it, it's extreme. Like it's huge. Yeah, it was it took up like four or five hotels or something like that. It was monstrous. Yeah. So, I mean, tell me if I'm getting this wrong, but as far as I can kind of figure out, and it is like a lot to unpack. It was it's basically just a giant nerd media convention split across four or five hotels that are themselves spread across the entirety of the Atlanta downtown. So basically, whenever you're walking down the Atlanta downtown core, there's just like all these events going on pretty much 24 hours uh, a day. Yeah, almost 24 hours a day. I think it's closer to like 22, but still. Um, yeah, so the entire downtown Atlanta area is just full of people in costumes and... Uh rushing from one hotel to the next trying to get to their next panel 
uh, or go shopping in the giant shopping section of the convention. Some of my uh, favorite moments were when we were just walking downtown and then all of a sudden, like, there's these legions of cosplay people are crossing the street and it's just, like, surreal. Literally um, legions in some cases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think the entire cast of 300 was there. Yeah, the 300 cosplay was uh, incredible. And if you haven't already, checked out our Instagram page instagram.com slash template institute where we've uh, we've been posting a ton of the cosplay photos we took but i'm sure we'll interspace them throughout this video as well because why not yeah sure so do you remember like at this point it's a bit of a blur it has been i think a week and a half or so or two weeks since we were actually there like what was the first day like for you do you, do you remember that at all uh the first day was actually fairly chill if i remember correctly we uh that's the day that we met our friend Space Doc for the first time, Daniel and yeah. Alistair from Space Doc, which was pretty cool. Um, and I don't think we had any panels until the afternoon, I want to say. I'm not even sure if we had any on that first day. Mm, I don't. I know that I did. I took a, a little class the first afternoon. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a voice acting class, right? Yeah. More of a workshop, I guess. Yeah, that blew my mind because I didn't know that they were actually doing like in-depth tutorial stuff at, at Dragon Con. Yeah, I was flipping through the schedule and there's a lot of like classes there, not just panels. There's classes for, uh, I saw some cosplay classes and obviously the voice acting one. There were some artist classes, author, like, writing classes, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, uh, well, while you were doing that, like... I was just getting swept up in the whole Dragon Con experience. And, like, I'm not a huge convention guy myself, so it was a lot to take in. So it was mostly me wandering around the various hotels, looking at all this amazing cosplay. And I think by the time we got back, I was kind of getting into it. And that's where most of the photos started coming from, just us wandering around, hunting down cool-looking cosplay. Yeah. I uh, <clears throat> I remember you, you asked me to, like, ask people if we could take their picture. But I was like, I can't ask. And then you take the picture. So you have to ask. So then I would just point out who you should ask. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I've uh, never been entirely comfortable asking like strangers for their photo, even during conventions. So it ended up being like, this fun game. So uh, I'm, I'm glad we did that. It was a lot of fun <laughs> that night. But uh, yeah, the next day, that would have been what, Friday or Saturday? Friday, yeah. Friday. That's when stuff started really happening panel wise. And uh, I think you had your workshop again that day, didn't you? Yeah, there was a two-day workshop, so I had another one on the Friday. Um, you had a couple of panels that you went to on the Friday, though, right? Did I? I forget. Which yeah, ones did I go to? There was, there was a couple. That I think that we went to the Twitch 101 panel that day. You know what? Let's not even split this out day by day because <laughs> I can't remember which day. Like, let's just talk about the panels. So okay. we definitely went to um, the Twitch 101 uh, class, which was mostly geared towards, I think, newcomers. But it, it had some useful advice for us as well. Yeah, but it was also just kind of, there were some aspects of Twitch that I just wasn't knowledgeable enough because we hadn't, like, really gotten into the, the nuts and bolts of everything. So there were there were some aspects of it that I was like, oh, I didn't even know that I should look there. Um, So that was eye-opening. Yeah, I think we were both pretty proficient when it came to, like, video editing and audio, but, like, Twitch is the one aspect of the Template Institute that neither of us, like, had much experience in. So it was cool just to get, like, a even a basic overview of what that was all about. Yeah, especially from somebody who works within the company. For sure, yeah. So ignoring like the whole day-by-day -day thing, I can't remember which days were which, but some of the other panels we went on, um, well, I know specifically I went, um, I think you were doing something else at this point, but I went to an amazing uh, social media panel um, mm. between all these experts talking about like, uh, you know, Twitter and Instagram and, and all these things. And that's why we ended up starting our Instagram account, just because I was so inspired by all of these things these folks had to say. I wish I could do it justice, but it was a really just in-depth presentation on like, this is how you do um, social media. This is how you build an audience. This is how you make engaging posts. It was it was pretty amazing. Yeah, you feel like you've uh, you've already started implementing some of those lessons. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, it might be a few months before we see like any actual like reward or results from that, but uh, no, it's definitely changed the way we do some stuff. So it's been pretty exciting since then. Like even in the few weeks since. Yeah. So panel-wise, what else was uh, of interest to you? We went to this one panel, which was about the the sinking of the USS Scorpion. Yes. That was pretty cool. I didn't realize that an ent you could just lose an entire submarine and not be able to find it. Apparently it happens more often than, uh, I mean, I realized. I mean, they were talking about this was like the third or fourth submarine lost in uh, 
just a few years. But I think the main draw from that panel was the the host. Yes. Yeah. Mark Captain Mark McDonough. Very interesting fellow. Yeah, Mark with a K. Yes. We ended up uh, meeting a lot of Marks over the course of our time there because uh, we marks. also briefly got a chance to talk to Mark Mir. Yes, Commander Shepard himself, Mark Mir. That was really cool. That was amazing, yeah. You did most of the talking, but it was just like a cool experience to hear someone who I've admired in game form in real life. Yeah, he's a, he's a really, really chill dude. and uh, Absolutely. Yeah, a very nice human. So before I move on, though, were there, was there any other panels that uh, stuck out to you? There was one panel on um, military ethics, or si- what was it? Ethics and military science fiction, uh, which yeah. I was so excited for. It sounded like exactly my bag, and mm-hmm. um, it, it didn't go in as nitty gritty as I was hoping for it to go. Um, but what it did do is inspired me for what I want to do when it comes time for us to do panels ourselves. Oh, yeah, for sure. And speaking of that, should we maybe move on to the Saturday fan meetup where stuff started rolling? Yes, yeah. We had our first official fan meetup while we were there, which was really, really cool. I still can't believe it happened. Yeah. Um, A couple of people ended up uh, messaging us on social media later uh, saying that they didn't get the memo of when the meetup was. So we're going to have to do a better job of explaining when it's going to be for next time. Yeah, the organization wasn't great. I I think we just said we're at the stairs next to the photos and we didn't even know if it was outside or indoors until we (laughs) we got there. Not having a good understanding of the way the buildings are laid out also made it hard for us to plan it in advance because we had no idea what these hotels look like. What's amazing though is even with our bad directions, we still had people show up who knew us, which was like incredible. Yeah, it was it was kind of bizarre too, um, because you do start to form connections with with fans online. However, they're still just usernames and or numbers. And then all of a sudden, to have a person come up to you and say, you know, I I love your channel. I love what you do. This is how your channel has affected my life. It's it's humbling. It's really nice. Yeah, I mean, so much of what we do is reduced to just you know names or letters on a screen so like meeting actual people who've seen our stuff was was awesome it was like maybe the highlight of the entire the entire weekend but uh, in addition to that we actually had someone from dragon con itself come to meet us which uh opened up some new possibilities yes perhaps some exciting new opportunities for next year yeah i I mean i think the hope is that next year we'll be you know on panels uh, ourselves like you said maybe we can do our own version of ethics and science fiction or world building and science fiction or, or something else. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. I uh, was very, very inspired. Yeah, so moving on, I mean, I feel like that covers most of like the panels and, and um, like the business side of things that we accomplished. But just like, what was your kind of favorite parts just for the, the fun aspect of the whole weekend? Well, there's there's a couple, but I would have to say my favorite was just looking at all the cosplays. I had no idea how much of a cosplay con this was. So I was floored by the absolute quality and dedication and creativity that so many of these costumes had. There were there were some really excellent combinations and I think we we took pictures of all my favorite ones and posted them on Instagram. So uh I did feel um a little underdressed, shall we say, in my Lara <laughs> Croft outfit. <laughs> Well, your Laura Croft outfit was good. I mean, I think you got a few photo requests yourself. I got one. Oh, okay. Well, one. But yeah, that's that wasn't much compared to some of the professional, I assume, people out there who just had these yeah in, incredible outfits that like I don't know that like I don't I don't even know how they how they designed them, much less how they how they're wearing them. Like there was like an eight foot tall robot guy just wandering around. It was nuts. Yeah, there was some truly amazing constructions there. Like the skill and the time and the patience that goes into making them. I have so much respect for cosplayers who who go in that that hard. Well, we mentioned this um, on the Neutral Zone podcast we did with Space Doc and, and Star Wars Explained, but what blew my mind was the cosplay that was specifically designed for Dragon Con. Yeah, like all just the inside jokes that only people who have gone to Dragon Con before would get. I mean, I guess the best example is 
I don't know, I'm going to tell this as best as I can remember it. We first heard this from, you know, Alex of, of Star Wars Explained, but apparently the Marriott, which is one of the hotels this convention takes place in, had this really distinctive carpet. And a few years ago, people dressed up as soldiers, only the camouflage they were wearing was the pattern of the carpet. And this video went viral of them crawling along the floor, completely camouflaged. And <laughs> since then, it just like took off. Yeah. And then the Marriott took away that carpet and everyone raged. Yeah, and, and now it's like this just ongoing joke. I mean, I think we saw a star, um, a stormtrooper dressed up in this weird pattern that only a few days later we realized was the original uh, Marriott carpet design. So that was, like, pretty nuts. Yeah, and uh, somebody was dressed as the the local transit bus and would just, like, oh, yeah. run into other people's pictures because a bus will always ruin people's pictures. Yeah, I think... I think Alex told us there was like a, a demolition that was happening and they, they set up like a live stream and just as the building got demolished, a bus drove in front of the camera and ruined the entire thing. <laughs> so I guess it's famous now in Atlanta. Yeah, I, I really want to be able to participate in some of these inside jokes in uh, in future Dragon Cons because I'm definitely going back. 100%. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, we got to step up our game for next year. Yep. This ain't amateur hour anymore. <laughs> no, we don't only get to uh, only get that excuse once. <laughs> so that brings us to what was more or less the last day of the con, um, Sunday. Now we did an awesome game on Sunday. Do you want to attempt to explain that? Because I can't even start. Okay, so this was a. Huh, how do I want to explain this? Um, I can't, what was it even called? Do you remember? It's uh, it's called the National Security Decision Making Game. And I've asked you that like a dozen times. I forget every time. Every time. Um, but it's this, it's a, it's a LARPing game. That would be live action role playing. Yeah. But you, you play as uh, members of a government of different countries. You were, who are you again? Well, uh, in our scenario, it was the Cold War. So it started in, I think, 1960. And of the 50 players, I think we had 25 on the American side and 25 on the Soviet side. And by some miracle, I got assigned Khrushchev, which was the general secretary and leader of the Soviet Union, which it couldn't have been planned out better. It was amazing. <laughs> You're a little bit obsessed with the Soviet Union, aren't you? Yeah, it, it was... Uh, and I mean, like, I, I, the problem is I don't know how to describe this game because I don't understand how it worked. It was basically, you have to get... You're, you're, you're passing decision, uh, decisions through... Um, getting bills signed. Like, you write whatever you want on a slip of paper, you get enough signatures, and you hand it to the guys running the game, and they put it into action. But a lot of the times, the decisions you're making, you don't understand quite fully how they'll, you know, ripple across um, the game and what they're going to affect. Yeah, it's it's basically like a model UN on steroids. Yeah, so it's it's play politics, but they they took so much care in making sure that the system held true to the way politics in real life work so um each action has consequences and since so much of this game is player driven um like it is in reality um you know just instead of players you've got real countries you know it just like some the responses that one country will have to another country's action can be totally totally different and and it can create some really, really interesting scenarios. Yeah, and, and like the detail is what got me. Because you'd think in a game like this, you'd have, you know, the president and maybe like one player acting as Congress and maybe another as like, I don't know, the head of the military or something. But this, they went all out. Like, not only did we have um, like a chief diplomatic officer, he himself had his own diplomatic staff. Like we had like, I think, five diplomats on our team, not to mention the KGB and the people running the military and... and um, like the Minister of Agriculture, the Ministry of Industry. Like we had all these people who had all these different jobs and, and somehow it all came together. Like I, I believe you were assigned diplomat to Europe or something? I, I was the ambassador to Europe and the, and the Americas from, from the United States. And we had the President, the Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Agriculture. Um, and then every four years we had an election. And, um, you know, we had a, we had a Congress and, uh, I don't think we had a Senate. I think the, uh, the game masters were playing the Senate and well, you, we you also had like because... NASA and the FBI and the CIA and 
all of those types of things. So KGB equivalents. Yeah, uh, sorry, I was going to say, yeah, like you, you might have had the Senate and just not realized it, because I don't think I met everyone on my own team. No, like, I there were so many people. Playing as. Like, I probably talked to only four people, and there were 50 oh, really? people in that room. Well, I was the general secretary, so there was a lot of people, you know, <laughs> who wanted my attention. But uh, I think yeah. my, my well, favorite also, story from the whole game. Also, I was really bad at this game. I was also really, really bad at this game. I oh, yeah. didn't quite understand what it was that I was trying to accomplish. So I kept trying to set up trade deals with Nicaragua um, because I, I was like, oh, if I, you know, set up good faith with <laughs> with countries in Central America, then the Soviets won't get a foothold there. Um, instead of realizing that what I should have been doing was talking to Japan about getting a technology tr- trade deal set up. Yeah, I mean, so much of that game is just reliant on having a, a knowledge of history. So if, if you don't know the era, you're, you're pretty much sunk. Yeah. My interest is much older than the Cold War. So you would have done well in, like, the national decision-making game in what era? Probably Germany in the 12th century. Oh, my God. Okay, well, I'm glad <laughs> we didn't do that. Because uh, my favorite um, story out of that game was at about, this was like a four-hour-long game. And at two hours in, um, I realized that I hadn't talked to you in, like, a while, and I had no idea if you were having a good time. Um, the problem was the Cold War was in cold or in full swing. So we had, like, an actual kind of... Um, dividing line across the room and as the general secretary i couldn't just cross this line without you know being arrested as a traitor or having my position taken away or something so i ended up trying to organize a a summit with the american president which which took forever it took literal hours just to get this done we had to uh find an intermediary in the united kingdom then i had a meeting with the secretary of state which was secret but then that got leaked to the press and then finally you had your election uh, and then finally I ended up meeting the president at the same time. I'd forgotten that we put missiles in Cuba. So in an attempt to connect with you, I accidentally solved the Cuban missile crisis along with the American president. <laughs> yeah, that was, it was pretty cool. It's the scenarios like that, that, uh, that really make the game special. And the, uh, the game was actually, uh, co-created by the, the guy who was giving that panel on the Scorpion, uh, Mar- Captain Mark McDonough. So, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and hopefully we'll have a chance to talk to him about both that game and his experiences in the Navy uh, moving forward. Yeah, I think uh, some stuff's in store with that, actually. Yeah, so, um, you know, Dragon Con is just much too big to fully cover everything that happened. I mean, you walk down a hallway, you, you know, you lose your way for a second, and you're going to find yourself in just, like, amazing uh, experiences, like, over and over again that weekend. I just, like went out just for a walk and I ended up finding like the Marvel cosplay um, photo event, for example. So I don't know. Was there anything else from the, from the weekend that really stuck out to you? Uh, nothing's springing to my mind right now, but it's also been like two weeks. So yeah, ideally we would have recorded this a bit uh, earlier, but we've, uh, we've been busy, but yeah, no, I mean, uh, I think we already said that we're going to be back for sure next year, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this unscripted discussion if you'd like to hear more stuff like this from Larissa and I, just uh, this was the first convention that we've ever attended, not as ourselves, but as the Temple Institute. So hopefully we'll have more stuff like this to talk about. So if you enjoyed this, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, we will hopefully see you at Dragon Con next year and perhaps at another convention before then. Who knows? Who does know? All right. Uh, so until next time, I am Mark, and that was Larissa. And thank you all for watching. The Templin Institute investigates alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to directly support us, vote in polls to determine future topics, and receive some cool rewards, please consider pledging to our Patreon page.